Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. So church, it's important for you to know, first off, that as we are on this vitamin C series, it's important for you to know that neither one of these values, courage, character, commitment, neither one of them are created to stand alone. Let's get that first on, first and foremost, right? None of these things are meant to just stand alone. Not only are they equally important, not only do they work well with each other, but they are more valuable when you use them together. It's basically, it's basically like a power triangle, okay? So you have, you have courage, you have character, and you have commitment. Courage, character, and you have over here, good old commitment, the C word, right? Now, they, they are just as powerful. They're, they're powerful values if you're talking about someone, hey, uh, so-and-so is courageous and, uh, you know, they just they just resemble someone who's very brave. Or maybe you're talking about an individual and you, you can really describe them as being very committed. They have a good value in the sense of having good, strong commitment. Or maybe you talk about someone and, and you just can't help but to notice their character and how it stands out and how it's very honorable and very loyal. And so we have these, these values over here. But what's important to know is they are extremely valuable when you use them together. And here's what I mean by that. Most of the time when you are uh, entering into a, a season of your life where you need to accomplish something you've never done before, you need to have the tools to to, to really fulfill something that you have no experience in, you have no knowledge in, and this is the season that God has you and you, you're, you're ready to learn. You've never approached these waters before. Listen, it's going to take courage. Let me see. To make that commitment. Okay, it's going to take courage to then make that commitment. And so once you've made that commitment... Once you've gone ahead and you've made that commitment, now that commitment is going to reveal your character. So your courage, you need that to make the commitment because it's not easy. You, you need to be able to know I'm going to be committed to this. And so that's going to take you reaching in deep to be courageous about that. And once you've made that commitment, now what really is on the inside of you as you're committed, what really is going to hold you together, that's going to reveal your character. And so now you, you've stepped into your commitment. Now you're starting to get to know yourself a little better. People are starting to get to know you a little better. They're getting to know how you handle press, under pressure. They're getting to know how you uh, go about life. They're getting to know these things about you. So now it's going to reveal your character and then your character, because this is your, this is your like power climate. This is what you're going to use ever so often. And your character is then going to give you the strength or the courage to continue. So this is your vitamin C, church. This is what allows your brain to function. This is what... It, it, it grooms your spiritual health. You, 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 you enter seasons. Look, the Bible talks about seasons, that there's a time for everything. So we know that there's always going to be a season for everything. And so in order to approach these seasons in life, you have to understand that it's going to take courage to make these commitments that you've never made before. To make these commitments that are asking a little bit more of you than you may have ever given in your entire life and then once you make that commitment, you're going to start to see the character that God has placed already in the si inside of you to come out. And it's going to be revealed now. Now you're going to see some things that maybe you don't like that you need to correct. But you'll also start to see things that maybe you didn't re realize were there and are actually beneficial to your spiritual growth. And then that character now is then going to produce the strength or the courage to continue. So they all play an important role with each other. They all benefit. They support each other. For example, if, if you were here last week, last Wednesday, you heard Pastor Regina gave this awesome example. And she shared with us that courage will get you to the promised land and that character will keep you there. 
right? Very prominent, very profound, very true and real to, to these values, right? Courage will get you to the promise line and character will keep you there. And if I were to come in and define now what commitment would look like in this process, what would now commitment, what role would that take? I would, I would see it as courage will get you to the promise line. Character will keep you there. And write this down in your notes. Commitment will remind you of why you're there. So courage is going to get you to that promise line. Courage is going to take you into the promise. And then your character is going to keep you there because you value it. Right, But now your commitment is going to be that thing that's going to tell you why you're there in the first place. Because listen, making a commitment is never easy. And in fact, if it's easy, it's not a commitment. It's an interest. If it's something that, that is easy to go about, you just really like that a lot. But when it becomes challenging and now you have to stand true to it, even when it's not easy, that's a commitment. And that commitment is going to remind you constantly of why you're in this season to begin with or why you're in this walk with God to begin with or why you're in this place as an individual to begin with. And when you use the word commitment as a verb, it actually, or an action word, it actually uh, has a definition if you use it as in such as um, I'm going to commit or I have committed. The definition of this means to carry into action deliberately. So what that definition tells me, to carry into action deliberately, what that definition tells me is that when I make a commitment, when I make a commitment, I am going to be making an intentional decision. That means this, this isn't because I've, I'm just going on a whim and, oh, yeah, I guess I can help out and do this. Oh, I guess I can serve at that ministry. I mean, it looks good. You know, you got a cool badge, got some responsibility, got some rewards. Might meet my wife, might meet my husband. You know, you, it's not, it's in a, you, you're, 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 you're making an intentional decision. When you're committing to something, it's, it has purpose. There's something that drove that motive for you to actually say, I'm in. Count me in. And that commitment is going to remind you of why as you go along. Therefore, that also tells me, and you can write this down, that commitment will reveal your character and now begin to bring value to your decisions. So now these intentional decisions you're making, they're worth something. Because you had to put everything on the line. You're, you're intentional now. I know it's not going to be easy. And so listen, when you value something, uh, you, don't, you don't just treat it like whatever. When you have something of great value, you don't toss it around the room. You don't leave it wherever you want to leave it. You don't forget about it from time to time. You remember every detail of that thing. And so your commitment now has value because you have, you have allowed commitment to bring character, your character, to surface. So let's look in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 through 20. And they're going to put it on the screens here. And it says, today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so I... I, I want to I wanna now break this down for us tonight and, and really see God given, has given us a game plan. A game plan how to enter into not only his promises, but to how to actually materialize these promises in our life. And this is the game plan he's given us. All right. So look, at the top of verse 19, off the bat, we are given two options. We're given straight up two options. And this is him giving us the freedom of what we get to do. And so the what of this game plan equals, and this is, write this on your notes, make a choice. God has given us the option, the freedom to make a choice. Here, you can have this and this. You decide. I'm not going to choose for you. You get to choose life or you get to choose death. But I'm giving you the option. So don't say I never gave you the choice. Don't say I forced this on you. Don't say you, you were born into this. Don't say that this is something you just inherited. No, we have a choice. We have a choice. So the what 
equals make a choice. Plain and simple, we get to make the decision. And then now at the end of this verse, he then begins to tell us why. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. And so the why equals long life. So God is giving you the option. He's saying, hey, you can make a choice to have a long life or you can make a choice not to. But you have that decision to make. And so the what is he's saying make a choice. The why equals long life. And so now we're here at verse 20. And God is now, now he's really painting the roadmap. Okay, now I'm about to tell you how this is going to happen. And this is how he tells us. He, the how equals love, obey, and commit. To love, obey, and commit. Verse 20 says, you can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. In other words, to love, obey, and to deliberately carry to action. So you love him, you obey him, and you deliberately make this happen. You stick to it. Commitment is simply you making it happen under any circumstance under any pressure, under any opinion, under any emotion, you will stick to it and you will make it happen. And so when God tells us, he's telling his people, listen, I want to give you long life. I want your descendants to have a, a, a lasting life, a fruitful life. I want your people to have something to look on and say, wow, this is our inheritance. Wow, I... I, I, I've, I have seen so many generations of, of prosperity, so many generations of, of success, so many generations because I decided to love, obey, and commit myself to him. And for those of you who are in here who maybe you're in that position where uh, you, you, you have a lot of influence over your family. A lot of people look up to you. A lot of people look at you to make that decision. A lot of people are watching your actions. A lot of your family are, are honestly putting you on this pedestal that maybe you felt like you didn't deserve. But you're there. And God is saying, I want to give them long life through your love, through your obedience, and through you deliberately carrying into action what I want you to do. And it's through that that they begin to experience long life. See, you're, you're not giving them salvation. You're just giving them a choice now, just like you had a choice. And now they can choose that as well. And so the what is make a choice. The why is, go ahead, church, what's the why? Long life. And the how is love, obey. Again, the what? The why and the how. Now, now the fact is this. Listen, the fact is, the fact of the matter, life isn't going to fall in this pattern that God has given us. Life isn't going to line itself up with, with this game plan that God has given us. It's not going to say, you know what, that sounds like a great plan. I'm going to step right in the line with what you're doing here. It's not. It's not. It, 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 it's not going to happen Things aren't going to happen always as you wish. Uh, there are going to be some things that are not in your control. And you can't know it all because you're not God. You're not all-knowing. You can't know it all. It would freak you out. It would trip you up. You would go crazy if you knew it all, insane if you knew it all. And everyone would think you're crazy because you thought you knew it all. <laughs> so the, 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 it's, that's just the fact of the matter. That's what we're faced with. That's our, our nature as we have experience sin entering into our our human nature we have experienced that life just isn't going to be what we always want it to be it's not going to happen john 10 10 says that the thief has come to steal you know the verse kill and destroy but i have come to bring life and life more abundantly and so the fact that satan may have used these events in your life that didn't go your way the fact that he may have used them to steal your courage or even destroy your character that may have been out of your control maybe he's he's come along and there's been events in your life where he has actually now been able to influence himself into your life by killing these commitments too much pressure i too much trauma too much drama too many things going on uh, i i give up i'm done I can't handle this commitment. I'm handling too many commitments over here. But you made a decision. And you made a deliberate choice when you committed. But yet, for some reason, this event 
has influenced you and then allowed the enemy to kill that commitment. You, you used to be the boldest one in the room. You used to be the one who wasn't afraid to speak your mind. But then something came, hit you in your identity, hit you in your self-esteem. Someone started talking about you. Someone very close to you started gossiping and slandering your name. And now that courage was stolen from you. You can't speak up anymore. I'm scared to address this matter. I don't want to think about this anymore. So we know this story. We know this verse. And in some cases, you may not even see it coming. And so it's not really your fault. No one's saying that it's your fault that the thief comes. That's just the nature of the thief. That's just the nature of Satan. No one said it was your fault because in reality, he's, he prowls around looking to whom he could devour. So he's going to catch you by surprise. Job didn't see it coming when everything was taken from him. He didn't see it coming. So it's not, it's not that you're going to see it coming or anything like that or that you're expected to. But we know how this story ends. We know that this verse says that, hey, and, I'm, and Jesus is saying, I have come to bring life and life more abundantly. I have come to bring the, I have, may have lost it all, but I'm going to get all of it back and some life. The, I didn't see this coming, but my God is faithful to restore life. Th- that's the life that God brings. That's what we know. We know that verse that way. It translates it. So so we read this verse and we're encouraged and we're strengthened. We're ready to go. We're ready to take it on. But here's what I want to bring to our attention tonight. Where between Deuteronomy and John did we feel like that choice was taken away? Because if you, in reading Deuteronomy, we know that that promise of life was already there. That promise of abundant life was already given to us. It hasn't changed. Therefore, the what and the why and the how that we all learned tonight from Deuteronomy, that still matters today. That's so relevant. Now, you you may be the one that's saying, well, that was Old Testament. I I can't apply that to my New Testament life. (laughs) No, it matters. It matters because the promise of life stands. And when God promises, he doesn't remove his promise. And if he has given his promise, then the tools to support that promise still stand. It's just now your decision on how that materializes. It's just now your choice on whether you want that life to really show up in its abundance the way God promised it to you from the beginning. A, a well-established business consultant, and he's an educator and an author, the name of uh, Peter Drucker, once said that unless commitment is made, there are only promises and hopes, but no plans. In other words... Unless we make the decision to commit ourselves, unless we're making that decision, right, choose, the what is make a choice. Unless we make the decision to commit ourselves to carry out our actions deliberately, to carry out our lives deliberately, to carry out our faith deliberately, to carry out our values as a family deliberately, to carry out our word that we give to people so freely, deliberately, unless we carry that out, then the promise and the hope that God gives us will simply remain just that, the promise and the hope. And it never materializes in our lives. And I don't want to say that to discourage anyone from thinking, well, I'm not that great at commitment. Does that mean I don't get the promises? No, the promises are yours. He said, I have come. That's a, that's a done deal. But what I'm trying to say is God, God is trying to paint a picture of what it looks like to push through, through courage, to make the commitment, and as that commitment is made, allow that to build and reveal your character. And then once that character is revealed, now, now, you, you can't go back to the, I don't know how to make a commitment, because now you've been given the courage to make many commitments. And what God has called you to do, you're not afraid to say yes anymore. And what God has put on your heart, what he's convicted in your life, you're not afraid to go and change anymore. Now, what God has instructed you specifically on what steps to take next, you're not afraid to take that approach. You're not afraid to do the work because you've already gone through that process. And so that's what what I believe God is saying through these verses here tonight. You know, the most life-changing commitment that I've ever made, aside from following Jesus, was marrying my wife, was getting married. Uh... I, I met her at 20 years old, and I got married at 21. I didn't know one thing about commitment, one thing. I did know 
that I was interested in. I did know that I was interested, but I didn't know anything about commitment. And anything I ever did in my life was always short-circuited because I didn't know what commitment looked like. And I didn't want to make commitment. And then I get married, and now I better know about commitment. <laughs> right? That's what everyone tells, tells you before you get married. You, you better know what you're doing. You better know that you want to marry this person. And it's true because you got to know. And so, and so I don't know anything about commitment and, you know, I'm sure you can hear from many people, that first year, if you don't know anything about commitment, is not fun and pretty. But, but I had to make a choice. I had to make the decision. Was I going to just say, I don't know anything about commitment? I'm only 21 years old. What do I know? I'm only 20 years old. I didn't know what I was getting into. I could even be, I could even be that spooky spiritual. It was my flesh. I couldn't take it. I was burning. I had to. And now I just justify all everything. Now I know. See, God said make a choice so that you can have a long life. And by doing that, you're going to love, obey, and commit to me. And so I'm going to love my wife like Christ loved the church. I'm going to obey the Lord, and I'm going to honor her in everything that she does. I'm going to honor her by making sure I pay attention to her needs. I pay attention to, to what, what makes her happy, but not only happy, but makes her fulfilled and knowing that she can trust that I'm becoming all that God has called me to be. And I'm going to commit myself to the marriage by first committing myself to God and honoring that. And so God gave us the how. God has given you the game plan to approach whatever it is that you're being challenged with right now. He's given you the what. He's given you the why. And he's given you the how. You just got to make the choice now. I'm going I'm to start wrapping this up. Uh, go with me to John chapter 1. And I'm going to close with this last verse. John chapter 1. Go in your Bibles. Go in your phones. Verse 14 tells us that the word became human. Or in the Greek, and this is in the New Living Translation, but in the Greek it originally says the word has become flesh. And has made his home among us. What that tells me. What that tells me that God deliberately, intentionally, with every purpose, put into action his son to dwell among us, live as a man, experience the temptations of a man, experience the challenges as a man, right? That he wasn't ex experienced with because he was in the throne uh, in heaven, but he, God committed his son to us. He committed his life to us. And then Jesus, giving the option, when he asked the Father, if you can take this cup away, take it. Given the option, made a choice, and now he committed his very last decision so that you and I can have a long life. So Jesus made a choice so his descendants can have a long life. And he did that by loving you and loving the Father, obeying the Father's command. And committing himself to that decision. He made a choice, people. Sometimes we think that God just fell into this, this, this written out script of what to do. But he made a choice. He made several choices. And each and every one of those choices was centered around the fact that you were considered worth it. And that your eternity was valuable to God the Father. He made a choice. He made a choice so that you and I can sit here today. And even though we're faced with our challenges that we are faced with, even though we're faced with our, our, our constant, it seems like we're just hitting these barriers over and over and over. We, we, we're faced with that constantly. He made that choice. So now we can get up, consider the why, and now commit our ways to what God is calling each and every one of us to do. If today's message impacted you in any way, 
and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.